Hey, welcome everybody to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Rock and Country Church. Uh, every Wednesday about 6.45 we're here. Glad you can join us tonight. Becky is monitoring, so if you will, just go ahead and type in what uh, your prayer request. She'll share them with us, and then we'll write them down, and we will uh, pray them up, okay? Uh, we're going to be in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. This will be one of the, the first Gentile that comes to Christ in, uh, in the book of Acts. So we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. Cornelius and his whole household. I'd like to remind you about Sunday morning, Sunday morning 9 a.m. We have a, a new edition or a new uh, episode of RCC Bible Study TV where we go chapter by chapter, uh, book by book. And uh, then also at, uh, we'll take a short break after that. And at 10 o'clock you can join us live on Facebook for our Sunday morning service. Okay? So God bless you and glad you're with us tonight. Uh, we're going to do our prayer requests and praise reports. Again, uh, type yours in if you want to. We'll be happy to share them. I'd like to remind you real quickly about our book. A, it's not a prayer request book, but you can send your prayer request in. We'll be happy to pray for them and pray over them. But uh, this is a prayer book full of names from all over the world. And we would love for you to send in your name and uh, a good address or someone you want us to pray for. And we will be happy to lift them up to the Lord. I sent out two letters today. Uh, letters of encouragement with our decals because we will send you one of our decals. It says Rocky Country Church is praying for me so that when you see this, you'll know there's a church here in Kemp, Texas that's praying for you. I sent two letters out today to California. So no matter where you're at, I'll send you a, a, a decal and I'll send you a, a letter of encouragement. Okay? Well, God bless you. I'm glad you're here tonight. We're going to start with uh, Sister Edie, if you will. Yeah, uh, Thomas and I, uh, Holly and Gary and their family, Sam and Deb and their family, they're doing lots of stuff this year for their son that was killed in the service. And, and they're, I don't know what they do with it when they get it. I'm pretty sure they go back to some guy in the service. But they, they've really done, outdone what I've seen before. Yeah, they do. They do a lot every year yeah. to honor him. He uh, he was killed in April uh, over in Iraq. And uh, anyway, there you go. He's a baby. Yeah, he so was. Young. And they uh, they really really miss him. Yeah. yeah. And um, Trisha and Timothy, um, my two sisters Sue and Dina and their family, my son Michael and his wife and the new baby that they have. Uh, that their kids have, who brings that right? Um, everybody that comes to our church, everybody ought to be coming to our church. <laughs> that would be everyone. That? <laughs> um, that just came out there like that. That would be absolutely yeah, everyone. The Lord must be coming to say that. <laughs> Surely I don't mess up all of it. Yeah, um, our, our church service, our Bible study, study and um, we missed a lot of people from our Bible study. We need our Bible study people back. Yep. It's better when everybody's here when you talk about it. And everybody's <clears> it is. And I, and I appreciate when everybody comes and everybody talks about it. Right. Um, our country. Mm, our world. And everybody gets fucked. Everybody hates each other. <laughs> it should be nice if everybody could learn how to love each other. All right. All right. Okay. Thank Amen. You. All right. Bless you. All right, uh, brother. Usual. I'm usual. Short and sweet. Okay. Hey. Okay. Welcome. Glad to hear you, Lord. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's warming up. That's for the books. Come. I know. I know. So, here I am. Um, me, my mom, my daughter, my animals, especially those that are going to be pulling in a couple months. Um, right. The country, the church, all the ministries in the church, um, you and your stuff that's coming. Right, right, and, thank you. And of course, uh, Terry, mm -hmm. and her trip and her, what's going on with her. Family. Right, right, thank you for that. And also for Kathy, since she cannot be with us tonight. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Trump and Biden, they both need prayers. Yep. And that's it. <clears throat> all right, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Kathy uh, has uh, had her other eye worked on, so it's the reason she's not here tonight, so we definitely want to lift her up. All right, Brother Thomas, Dr. Tommy. 
I'm okay. You okay? Good. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. Good enough, bud. Uh, uh, whatever your name is down there, Army Man. <laughs> Rich? <laughs> Rich? Oh, Lordy, I'm going through a very challenging time. Um, I got uh, I had an incident today at the diner. Oh, no. uh, arrests were made and and uh, evictions were made and just uh, I mean you just it just didn't say unbelievable yeah it's just uh, it, it was his girlfriend this time and and uh, you know they, the Lord says pray for your enemies that's yeah, right and uh, uh, all I want is peace in my li life and this anxiety to go away because of that which is mm -hmm. also you know the depression and whichever is all come back I want that to go back then go away. <clears throat> And pray for you all. I'm, I'm so thankful to be here. I got a few hugs for some people tonight. Almost got punched by Tommy. Yeah. I learned now not to sneak up on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's jumpy. <laughs> I know. I, I, and I, I am so apologetic for that. I, I didn't know that I should have known better anyway. But, uh, you know, I. He does to me too. Pardon me? He does it to me too. Does he? Does he? Yeah, caught me off guard when he jumped. I thought, oh, gosh, dang, you know, I'm an on vet. I should know better than that. <laughs> <clears throat> but it was entertaining. And, yeah, yeah. and I think it bonded us a little bit more cause, cause, uh, because of that. But anyway, uh, you know, William and you and your upcoming yeah. surgery. And yeah. I, I just I just pray every day in my morning prayers that the Lord comes, the Holy Spirit dwells within my heart and directs me and raises me up and guides me. and. Because I've got something to give. I just sure. like where the Lord's going to take it all, you know, and and uh, and, and just uh, just uh, for the world, you know, we need a better we need a better place to live. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's oh that footnote. If I could add to our book, mm -hmm. I got a phone call from a very very dear friend from South Dakota. His wife had a massive massive heart attack. Oh. Um, I think she's going to be okay, but uh, but I guess what it sounds like they more or less had to replace or rebuild her aorta. Right. Aorta. Aorta. Yes. So if I could add her to her name, sure. To the book at some point. I'd sure. That. Do you have an address on them by chance? Uh, probably. Okay, because the way that it works is to, uh, and we say it all the time to add. We'll put her name in here, but we would like to have an address so that we can send her. Send him oh, I think you a decal and a letter of encouragement. Like I said, I sent two out today, and I'd be happy to send them one. Well, but we need a good address. I will yeah. be uh, okay before I leave or I'll text. Them. Yeah, we'll hook them up. You bet. Yeah, yeah. I told him I would. I would bring bring him. <clears throat> yeah, but we will add her to this prayer list tonight. Do you have a name? <clears throat> yes, uh, Brad and uh, Brad and Michelle. Michelle Beeler. B e e e l e r. Okay. All right, Michelle Beeler. All right, and Brad. All right, good deal. We got it. Thank you. You bet. Nice ride the other day, eh? Oh, loved it. Yeah, loved it. Even the, even though who I had to keep company with, it was awesome. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, <laughs> the Navy does leave. Oh, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I know. I know. It's terrible. Oh. And you did do that. Yeah. <laughs> you did do that. Well, All right, Sister that. Margo. <laughs> you and Terry. Terry's dad, my church, my family, Rosie and Mike, my brother and sister, Myra, Beverly and Ted, Carolyn and William. Thank you. Colleen, Trail Life, American Heritage Girl, Jack Spreer, Chris and Lori, and your surgery, uh -huh. and Kathy and hers. Right, right. Okay. That's it. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. Carolyn. <laughs> Sit Carolyn. Uh, me and William, my family and my church family. Uh -huh. um, your niece, Sherry. Yes. Um, Thank you, and, you. you and Terry, Terry's dad and uh -huh. sister. Um, everyone here and those that are not here. Uh, the Middle East, <coughs> our military, and Jack's prayer. Uh -huh. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Marine? Yes, sir. My family, our church family, military, friend of mine, Carl, lost his wife, oh, and two unspoken. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. All right, thank you, sir. All right, number 11. 
All right. First, uh, praises, uh, giving God all the glory for us being able to uh, have the finances to work on our parking lot and spruce the place up for the sidewalk and uh, just for the many things that God just keeps doing for this church. Amen. Uh, for the ministries that we have, I can't run through them all. But he knows what they are, and we thank Him for it, for giving us an outlet to to serve Him, and that's great. Uh, I want to. Uh, Keep you in my prayers, you know, for your health and yes. your, your body all together, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> well, all of ours, you know. Sure. Bodies need work. And yeah, for, Kenneth's getting old. And for Terry and her dad <laughs> to have some time together, you know. I mean, nobody yeah. lives forever, so They're it's good that Terry has some good times. You bet. I've just been with her dad. I know I wish I had more time with my parents. Yeah. So uh, I want to continue to keep lift up Crystal in my prayers and Chris and Lori. Uh, you know, I know Chris has got another doctor appointment every Friday, it seems like, but you know what? He's come a long ways, and I know he's going back to work, and it's taking a lot of injury, energy, and it's going to take some getting used to getting back in the grind. Yeah. And I, I want to uh, also keep Kenneth in my prayers that uh, he'll get some uh, relief on his allergy stuff, you know, just... Uh, Oh, you didn't know. Yeah. Well, Thank you. I just, I'm just, I want to lift him up in, in prayers because I know, you know, it sounds like a small thing in allergies, but I have them. Oh, it's tough. And they can make you miserable. Yeah. So I want to uh, uh, hope for closure for him on that. Uh, lift up Kathy for her little surgery today and keep praying for William uh, recovering and, and getting well. Thank you. Uh, we also, I have two unspoken for uh, Jack's prayer for family members. And Becky's family members as well next door. Lots of prayers and uh, Jack's prayers for them. Uh, I want to uh, uh, just say thank you to God and just pray for all the members in the nursing home uh, who come in every Wednesday and uh, uh, just fill me with joy every time I'm around them and just know how lucky I am just to be a part of that. Uh, thank you God for that. I want to lift up Raul's family and continued prayers for the stuff that they're going through. Rich for emotional lift for what he's going through. We love you, Rich. You know you can always call me. I'm a phone call away, buddy. So, uh, Becky and I, and uh, just pray uh, for prayers. And Lord, just keep my passion stirred and, and keep me hot on the trail even when I don't feel like it. And I feel like I'm tired for the next few weeks. I know it's going to be challenging to... Uh, be able to balance all this out, you know, for the things I got going on at home. Yep, and that's it. Pastor. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God is good. All right. Amen. <laughs> all the time. All right, Sister Becky. Um, for Brent and I, our family, uh, for my foot, because I think I got a cracked bone in my foot, but I have an edit checked out, but it's been over a month, so. They may have to crack um, it again. Um, they may have to. <laughs> Uh, for church, uh, for Trail Life, American Heritage Girls, our military first responders, uh, the USA, Israel, the Ukraine, uh, my friend Ruth, my friend Grady, my friend Trish, and my friend Mike Wilkes, all for health, and then I agree with everything everybody else said. Alright, alright, thank you. Okay, other sister Becky. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Anything you want to pray for? Uh, I'm thankful for this God-fearing congregation. Amen. I'm thank thankful you. for the opportunity to be a part of it. You bet. Glad you're here. I'm thankful for the time that we get to spend together. And sure. um, there are many that are calling out to the Lord and he knows who they are, and so I lift them up. Amen. And uh, thank him for his healing touch. You bet. And for the sacrifice that he made giving up his son so that we could see him one day. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great stuff. Okay, Deborah, I know you. Uh, you just drove 200 miles. That's it. No, no, I'm not. Not that. If it was him, I'd bust his chops, but it's not him. <laughs> I didn't know you were on motorcycles. But I'm so tired right now, Pastor. He didn't get no fight from me. Deborah, we, uh, you're the uh, last one. If you have anything you want to pray up. Oh, just uh, I thank uh, God for a safe journey to and from uh, see my grandkids. And uh, uh, 
just uh, yeah, pray for my daughter uh -huh. and her uh, her three friends who are leaving uh, in the morning. Uh, well, I guess they'll leave afterwards uh, to go to uh, Missouri and uh, be back home sometime on Sunday. Okay. So I will miss church. Okay. Is that it? Uh, well, just a whole bushel of um, Sure. Sure. Unspoken. <laughs> sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to especially lift up Melissa and Clark and their family, and Raul and uh, Kathy and their family. Uh, they're going through some turmoils right now that uh, certainly need the intercessor of God uh, on those uh, those family members. And then I agree with all y'all on everything. Uh, I haven't uh, had anybody uh, this week necessarily call for anything serious. Um, I do want to lift up uh, Sherry, my niece, because getting closer to her uh, major major surgery and uh, and uh, then I want to live in our church and of course I hope everybody went and voted as God directed you to vote or you will here pretty soon I went and voted Friday Tuesday and uh, there's a couple of referendums on there that are certainly worth voting yes for so I'm not trying to tell you how to vote just go vote <laughs> It's your, it's your privilege. It's not a right, it's a privilege. Right. Go vote, okay, as God directs. Yes, sir, today, something else? Today the only thing, wait, is, was today the only day to vote? Oh, no, no, it's Tuesday through uh, Friday, I think it is, is early voting. And then the 5th, which I think is Monday, is, is that Monday or Tuesday or something like that? Tuesday. Tuesday is, uh, is the actual voting period. This is early voting. Did you go in now? I always go in the day of the early voting, get it over with, so I don't forget. Where'd you go? Uh, you you don't vote where I vote. No. You vote in seven points, I think, at the uh, uh, post City office. Hall. City Hall. City Hall. Okay. All right. Good girl. All right. <laughs> she she, she voted. <laughs> Last time they made us vote at the church over there. The Lutheran church. Well, well, church. Okay. Well, you're no, over at Main Spring, so you may, you may, you'll have to just find out. Okay. I don't really know. Uh, most it's, likely it's the same place. It, it is okay. City Hall. City Hall. Imagine no, that. Okay, but he's in Payne Springs. So he probably has a different place to vote. Well, I have a Maybank address. I, I, that doesn't matter. Okay. I have, uh, I live over in Kaufman, but I vote up here at the, uh, uh, whatever, the secondary courthouse, what do they call that? Sub-courthouse. Sub courthouse. Thank you very much. Yeah. So that's where I vote. Because that's where we vote. Okay. So it's you have to find out, and most likely it's where you voted last time. Okay. Most likely. Three on here. You got three? Okay, yeah. go ahead. So uh, Chris mm -hmm. says for Pastor Woody and Terry, Amen. church leadership, the congregation, our family, everyone there, continued healing for Lori and I mm -hmm. and two unspoken. Amen. And then if I can get it to move. Kathy Trevino says, my usual. Rosemary Bruner says, please say a prayer for my daughter, Haley, who had a procedure today. Thank you and God bless. And then Terry's on here and she said, Susan and her family and my usual. Okay. She told me earlier she'd be coming back from the airport so she wouldn't be able to be going tonight. But she just, I think Glad you're there, Terry. She's probably driving down the highway looking on her phone. <laughs> Don't she, do that. Is she coming home already? No, no, no. She's going back to her dad's from oh, Portland, from okay. the airport. <clears throat> I need a tissue. Can you me a tissue or a box of tissues or something? It's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't that. I've got a, I think, you, I think you've uh, been cleaning my glasses with Crisco. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's... Uh, Let's pray for our teaching, then we'll get started, and we are in Acts chapter 10. Oh, there's one more just popped up. Okay. Debbie, Debbie Franklin says, hi, getting my taxes done, say a prayer for me. <laughs> All right, good deal. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the time that we can spend uh, studying your word. Father, I ask you to open up our hearts, souls, and spirits to receive your word. Teach us, Lord, as you would have us to be taught, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. <clears throat> this uh, chapter 10 here is really a pretty awesome chapter. 
uh, it is um, it is where the first Gentile family, if you will, comes into the new faith. All right. Um, in this, and you may or may not, uh, I doubt we'll get to it tonight, but in chapter 10 here, we're going to see not the day of Pentecost, but actually the third Pentecostal uh, encounter, if you will, uh, is going to be demonstrated. We've already seen one, which was over in uh, chapter 8, starting in verse 14 through 17. Uh, it's when the Samaritans were uh, blessed by the Holy Spirit and baptized and they received the Holy Spirit, which is the same way uh, as they, uh, the Jews did on the day of Pentecost. All right? And then, uh, like I said, uh, we may get to it, but I kind of doubt it because it's at the end of chapter 10, and it is the third Pentecost, and then there is a fourth act of Pentecost, if you will, which is going to be over in chapter 19 whenever we get over there. All right, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and start. If you'll just simply read chapter, I mean, verse 1, excuse me, chapter 10, verse 1, sister. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment. Okay, now the reason that I wanted you to do that just that one verse is because he was a centurion. That means he was very high ranking in the Roman army. Uh, he was probably in charge of, you know, upwards of a couple of thousand men or so, and uh, uh, a whole regiment of, uh, of people. And he, uh, I've got the wrong glasses. And um, it's, it's, here it's been focused. Whenever I have it here, y'all are blurry as all get out, so it's got me messed up. Anyway, he was in charge of uh, of a, a whole lot of guys in the Roman army, but he was a believer. And we're going to see that here in just a second. As a matter of fact, he was a devout believer, okay, which is pretty cool. All right, so keep going. A devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. All right, now, I want you to look back up here where it says, who feared God, okay? You see that? Mm -hmm. A devout man and one who feared God. The, the uh, people who believed in Judaism, all right, or followed the Jewish ways, which is believing in God, not Christ now, but believing in God, but had not been yet circumcised, okay? And so they were not actually um, incorporated, if you will, or brought into the Jewish faith because they haven't undergone the, the circumcision, the act of circumcision, which all Jews had to, had to go through that. But they were, he was a devout believer in God, following God. Those people were called God-fearers. They weren't called Christians. They weren't called uh, uh, Judy, uh, Jews. They weren't called uh, Gentiles. Uh, they had kind of their own class, if you will, and they were called God-fearers, okay? Uh, and they were set apart from other people because they weren't Christians. They weren't Jews. They weren't uh, followers of Greek. They were just... They had their own little group, and it's kind of a new group that come about. And this particular guy, who, who was a God-fearer, we're going to see later on, he ended up uh, calling to the Jews, because remember he was, of, uh, he was a, a Judaizer, he was of the Jewish faith, and so he's going to call Peter, who is a Jew, and because he is also the apostle to the Jews, Paul is apostle to the Gentiles, if we remember that. Right. All right, and so he's going to call for Peter to come help him out. We're going to see that uh, tonight. All right, so it's very important to understand that he is a, even though it says who feared God, he is in a class of people then <clears throat> called God fearers. Okay, all right, keep going. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. Now, if you look at this, you see angel, small letter A, right? Mm -hmm. 
So when we see a small letter A, we know it's an angel sent by God. It's not Christ. It's not the angel of God. It's a, it's a, just a regular angel, if you will. In the ninth hour, the Jewish day started at six in the morning, so that was zero. At nine o'clock in the morning, it was the third hour. At twelve o'clock, it was the twelfth, uh, the sixth hour, and then at nine o'clock, I mean at three o'clock, it was the ninth hour, and so. It's the ninth hour of the day. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. All right. Okay. Keep going. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, "What is it, Lord?" So he said to him, "Your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God." Okay. Now, let's read. Read this one more time. Read first four one more time. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, "What is it, Lord?" So he said to him. Your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. All right. Now, first thing I want you to look at, you see the where it says Lord. That's a small letter L, right? Right. Okay. So he's only he's only calling him Lord because he knows that he is more powerful than him than himself. Uh, he knows he's not Lord. He knows he's not God. He knows he's not Christ, whomever, because it would be a capital letter. So it's just a small letter L. So he knows that he is speaking of someone of power, right? Now, think about this. This is a man who believes in God, who is a Jew, all right, by heart, in his heart, a Gentile by, uh, by his, his life, if you will, and an angel is speaking to him. An angel of the Lord is speaking to him. So if an angel of the Lord can speak to this guy who is not a believer in Christ, he's not even really and truly a Jew, can angels speak to us? Evidently. Evidently, yeah. So if we are attuned to, uh, to believing, then that opens up the avenue because he was a devout believer, right? So if we are in tune to believing that angels serve God, and we pray to God, and God will send angels, then there is a possibility that, like the, the song says, there's angels among us. You remember the song from Alabama? There's yeah. angels among us? Yeah. I met a few that I thought were angels in my life. I met a bunch of them that I thought were devils, but there's a few <laughs> angels too. But, but we have to be open to this, you see. Uh, like, I mean, this is proof that an angel of the Lord can talk to a non-believer, if you will. He's, yeah, he's a believer in God, but not of Christ. And he wasn't a devout believer to the point to where he had been circumcised into Judaism. Uh, so he was not a, really a true Jew either. He was really a Gentile. He's kind of he's kind of out in the left field type guy, you know. But And those people were called, uh, again, God-fearers. They feared God, but they didn't know all that they needed to know. All right? But an angel of the Lord talked to him, and he heard him. Point blank. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, verse 5. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Keep going. He is lodging with Simon, a town <clears throat> whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. Now, if you go back over into like verse 36 through 39 or 40, something like that, remember when uh, Peter was in Joppa and he raised Tabitha from the dead. Okay, and then he was living with the tanner. Now this is a Jew living with somebody who deals with dead animals, which they would never do, okay? But yet he's doing it. So, and this is gonna come into play in a little bit. Uh, I can't remember exactly when, but when, uh, uh, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. But when Peter comes to realize, uh, Peter's going to come, I, I know what I want to say, but I don't want to say it yet because we're gonna, it's, it's good stuff. But Peter's going to come to a point to where he realized, A, God is in charge, and B, God can do whatever he wants to do, irregardless of what our religious beliefs are. Okay? All right? And we're going to see that in a little bit. I hope I didn't confuse you too much but it's fixing to get even better all right uh so verse seven 
And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. Okay, and eight. So when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. Okay, so he sent two of his guys. One of them was a true believer, just like he was. So this other soldier was most likely, uh, he doesn't say it, but most likely he was also a, uh, a God-fearer. And, uh, and he knew his mission, and he knew that he was subservient to uh, Cornelius. And so when Cornelius says, hey, you know, you can imagine them talking together, and he says, you know, I had an angel come to me, and the guy probably went, oh, wow, you had an angel, are you kidding me? I hope I can talk to an angel, you know, because he believed also. He was a devout believer also. And so uh, Cornelius told him, he says, look, this is what the angel told me, and so you need to go and take a buddy with you or whatever and go get Peter and bring him to us because this is what the angel said do. And this guy's going, oh, man, I get, I get to serve an angel, you know, I get to serve God by serving this angel. And so you can, you know that he was excited about taking off and, and going and getting Peter because he knew they knew who Peter was, okay? Because Peter was Peter was the apostle to the to the uh, Jews, so they knew he was Peter and that that uh, Jesus rebuked Peter uh, that lied about Jesus. I mean, he he know they know Peter. Yeah, because you know? then all the people he wanted to get killed. Exactly. Killed. Yeah, yeah. Maybe those people down there. Yeah. So. Uh, Anyway, so this guy is, I'm sure, pretty excited about going and serving the Lord because, again, he was a devout believer as well. All right, now we're going to, this kind of skips over to Peter over in Joppa. And uh, it starts talking about uh, the animals and such. Now, we have to go over to, we're not going to go there unless y'all want to. It's kind of a long chapter. Um, but you can write it out to the side, if you will, and then you can go read it later. All about the clean and unclean animals, the law of the unclean and clean animals, which is over in Leviticus chapter 11, okay? If you want to go there later on and read that, um, but I'm just give you briefly that the unclean animals a Jew was not to even touch, period much less eat, much less have anything to do with. And here he is living with the skinner, you know, the, the, the guy skinning animals and do, doing tanning, you know. So uh, you can be rest assured he probably uh, got a couple of the split hooked animals that he weren't, you weren't supposed to touch and uh, of course killed them and then you're not supposed to touch an unclean animal even when it's dead or when it, no matter what, you know. But yeah, Peter was living with his tanner. And, uh, but over in Leviticus 11, it tells us by God's standards what is a clean and unclean animal that God commanded them to consider as such, okay? okay. So with that, and the reason I want to let you know that you're not to even touch it, you're not to do anything with it, is because when we read through this, Peter's going to say, wait a minute, Lord, okay? Think you ever did that before? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, Lord, you got me with you. Okay, no harm's gonna come to you. Get thee behind me, Satan, right? <laughs> All right, verse, uh, actually, you're gonna read like verse 9, 10, 11, and 12. The next day, as they went on their journey, they drew near the city. Peter went up on the housetop to pray about, about the sixth hour, which was noon. Then he began. began became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet down the four corners, descending to him and let down down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. Okay, now, this is all kinds of animals, okay? So this is going to bring into play the uh, ordinances or the commandments or the standards of Christ over in Leviticus 11 because there's all kinds, and you'll see that this does bring that in in just a minute, okay? All right, um, verse 13. 
And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Get good. Please. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. How many times, how many times do you think Peter is going to rebuke God? I mean, the Lord said, Kill and eat. And he said, Uh uh, not me. He said, Peter, what are you going to learn? If Does he I say that God's just testing him? No, 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 he's not. He's just being normal Peter. Uh, I don't think God's testing at all because what he's doing, he, what he's doing is, is he's going back to the Levitical law, which is over in chapter eleven, and simply saying, "I can't do it." You know, your command. I'm a Jew. Your commandment tells me I cannot eat certain animals. I can't even touch them. And then I, then I think back, Peter, you were living with the tanner, okay? You know, you're contradicting yourself, man. You're sticking your foot in your own mouth. And, uh, or Peter, who do you think you're talking to? Yeah, and then, then Peter again. Peter says, I'm not going to know. Not me, Lord. I mean, if the Lord tells you to kill and eat, sorry, Thomas, you're dead. Okay? <laughs> but we're going to have Thomas for dinner. <laughs> what, 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 is that, what is that movie? Uh, I can't think of the name of it now where... Um, Anthony, Anthony, something goes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what's what is the name of that movie? Silence of the Lamb. Silence of the Lamb. Yeah, yeah. So uh, sorry about that, Thomas. We're having you. For, we're gonna have you for dinner. <laughs> Best meal you had. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. What's, what's that one saying in that mo movie? Put the lotion in the basket. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, let's all go with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he tells Peter to kill and eat, and Peter says, not so. Uh, you know, you, you forbid me to eat certain animals, so I can't do that. And you would think Peter would say, okay, whatever you say, you're the boss, right? Okay. All right, All right so uh, 15. go ahead and read 15. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Okay, now, what we need to talk about right here... Uh, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. If you go over to Mark 7, don't go there, but you can highlight it or not, go back later, and you go over to Mark 7, 18 and 19, you can see Jesus telling his disciples, he says, what goes in the mouth of a person is not what defiles them, but what comes out defiles them. So the things that go in the mouth as far as food, all right? So what he is doing there, what Jesus is doing there, over in Mark, he also does it in Matthew, he also does it in Luke. What he's doing is, is he is overriding, if you will, the Levitical laws. Okay? He is saying everything that I, well he's going to say it in a minute, everything that I make clean is clean. Alright? So he's overriding those Levitical laws. And people say, oh well, we can't do that. Those are God's laws. Well, Jesus is God. Okay? He can override them if he wants to, because he's God. You know, do you know that Jesus never, you know why Jesus never sinned? Because he can't sin against himself. He's the one that makes the laws. That's true. Okay? He, he makes the laws, and if he wants to change them, he can change them. Uh, I can't remember, I think it's in, uh, I think it's in Mark 4, where Jesus changes the, uh, the law of the Sabbath. He changes it from being the day to keep, uh, keep holy for the, in honoring the Lord. He says that the Sabbath was made for man, okay, and not man for the Sabbath. Man for the Sabbath means obeying the, uh, the fourth law of God's Ten Commandments, which is to keep the Sabbath holy and do not work, do not let your slaves work, do not any, let your anything work, okay? But Jesus overrode that because under the new covenant which we're under, just like he overrides this, under the new covenant, we are to get our rest every day so that while we are not resting, we are serving God every day, not just on Sunday or not just on their Sabbath, which was Friday, uh, Friday evening to Saturday evening. Okay? So when God says keep the Sabbath holy, he was saying you take that from Saturday, Saturday, Friday evening to Saturday evening, you take that and you are not to work, you are to keep it devoted strictly to me. Okay, well, Jesus changed that so that we understand now 
we are to get our rest, and then the times that we are as Christians, as followers of Christ, whenever we are not resting, <clears throat> we are to be working for God. We don't stop working. Okay? There's, we don't have a day off. Uh, retirement is not in here. Days off is not in here. Uh, holidays are not in here. Um, uh, what is Oh, personal days are not in here. Sick days are not in here. Okay? You work, you're to work for Christ every day. Now, that doesn't mean that you work 24 hours a day because you have to get your rest. But when you're not resting, you are supposed to keep God first and foremost in your life, right? Right. Okay? Which means sharing Him with whomever, uh, praying with Him, studying your scriptures, um, watching uh, certain things on the tube, if you will, whatever, however you are spending time, okay? You're to spend it with God. 20, okay, I'll say you work eight hours, or sleep eight hours, I mean. So, so 16 hours every day, you're supposed to be with the Lord. He made every day a Sunday. He, 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 he walks with you every day, absolutely every day. So you're to be with Him every day and keep every day for Him. Every day is for Him. Not just, that's why people, it just irritates me, I guess, when people, and I'm glad they do, but whenever they come on Easter and they come on Christmas, all right, and they think, oh, well, you know, God's going to love me the rest of the year because I come on Christmas and I come on Easter. Well, he would love you a whole lot more if you just lived your life for him. And that's what we're supposed to do. That's why Jesus changed that. Because we're supposed to live our lives every day for Him. Not just on Sunday. We don't come in on Sunday to punch our ticket. You know, we come, we, we serve Him and worship Him every day. Yeah. We're supposed to anyway. I know a lot of people that come Monday, they forgot they went to church on Sunday. Oh yeah, well, we, we're not going to judge anybody, but no, I, I do too. Their actions say I it. I do too. <laughs> I do too. So, what what God is doing here is, is He is getting rid of the where it says, what God has cleaned, you must not call common. So he is getting rid, or uh, overriding, if you will, the Levitical laws of clean and unclean food. Okay? Which is a depiction of overriding the segregation between Jew and Gentile. Which is, which is where we're going with all this. It's getting rid of that division. If you remember over, I believe it's in the book of Galatians, uh, it's either Galatians or Ephesians, to where he says, and, and he takes the two and makes one body. Remember that? Mm -hmm. He takes the Jew and he takes mm -hmm. the Gentile and he brings together as one body in Christ, right? right. In, in Christ, there's no, you know, there are Oklahomans and Texans, but there are <laughs> army and Navy. But, no, 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 no. no. We're all one in Christ. Seriously. We are all one in Christ. The Jew and the Gentile. That believe. Okay, that believe. There's the kicker. Because if you're not, if you are not a believer, A, you're not a Christian, okay? And so therefore you are not in the family of God. Right. Romans 8, okay? Chapter 8 and Romans chapter 9. You are not in the family of God. You are not a brother and sister in Christ. You're not a believer. I didn't say that. The Bible says that over and over and over. And Pastor, that's also what Paul did in Corinth. He wasn't getting through the Jews. He wasn't getting through the Jews. And so he turned and started uh, teaching for the Gentiles. He sure. There a year and a half. And turned, he was all about the Gentiles. Okay, y'all ain't going to listen to me? I'm going to go to the Gentiles. Right. Well, then, and that's really the book. First Corinthians and Second Corinthians is really the book that called him to be a, uh, an apostle to the Gentiles because they were Gentiles who became um, uh, Christians. But as he left and went over to Ephesus, all of the uh, Jewish leaders, if you will, or higher-ups, or however you want to call them, uh, they came into the church of Corinth and started uh, uh, getting rid of, not getting rid, but adding to Paul's gospel, saying right. that that uh, well, you also have to be baptized in, uh, in, or you have to not baptized. You have to be circumcised. You have to go into uh, 
and, and learn all the, the customs and the religions and the festivals Paul and all that kind of right. stuff. And Paul says, no, that is not true. And so uh, he wrote back to them those two letters, reprimanding them, telling them, no, there is one gospel, one gospel and one gospel alone. And so this is a depiction of getting rid of the Levitical laws. This is a depiction of getting rid of also the division between Jew and Gentile. Uh, so the, the whole point here is of, of this is God changing his rules. He's changing the, Levit the Leviticus uh, laws. He is changing the Jew and Gentile division and bringing it all together under one body, which is the body of Christ. Okay? So, verse 16, right? Yes. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. <clears throat> okay, and so the angel took the, uh, the object back up, the sheet with all the animals on it, after uh, he uh, decided to do what God told him to do, finally. And you see that three times? So you remember three times? Three times, honey. Yeah. Three times kind of hits Peter right between the eyes a bunch of times, right? It takes three times for Peter. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? We're going to see three times again later on. So anyway. All right. So we're recording here. So those of you who are going to have to look at this at the recording, I'm sorry, but it's number 11's fault again. And uh, we'll try to do better next week, okay? All right. <laughs> Okay, uh, Peter summoned to Caesarea, so. Now while uh, Peter wondered within, within himself what this vision which he had seen meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. So this is Simon the tenor again. So they went all the way over to Joppa in order to... Uh, uh, talk with uh, to get Peter, eighteen. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Simon was uh, Peter's surname, right. but uh, Peter is the name that that Jesus gave him. And yes, of course, he was there. And so uh, uh, Peter is uh, is answering them. So uh, keep going. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, and go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Keep going. Then Peter went down to, to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? Keep going. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has, has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was the divine, <laughs> divinely. divinely instructed by the holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words <clears throat> from him. Okay, now all that really kind of goes together from 17 all the way to 22. I didn't look at my notes here, so I'm sorry that I just didn't let you go. But only in 22 do we need to see one who fears God. There's the God-fearer again, if you will. All right? And he was sent by a holy angel, divinely instructed by a holy angel to, to come here. So it's not like this uh, uh, Cornelius just says, hey, you know, you guys go, go get Peter uh, because I want to talk to him. And uh, <clears throat> it also stated here that he he was a centurion he was a uh, uh, a uh, high up in the army of uh, of the Romans and uh, he was of a good reputation among all the Jews so the Jews knew of him but yet he was not a Jew but they knew of him it would be kind of like uh, uh, I know of, and I don't know Paul Roberts extremely well, but I know him pretty well. I know of him. I know a lot about Paul Roberts. He's a pastor down at River of Life, of course. And I know a lot about him, and I've visited with him many times, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know all about him. You know, he's not a part of Rock and Country Church that we meet every Sunday with, that kind of thing. 
you know, but he is a brother in Christ, I know, and they felt the same way towards this Cornelius, you know, the Jews is, you know, he's a great guy, he's a, he's a, he is a devout believer in God, just like we are, just he hasn't got the final cut done that, that we need to do in order to make him one of us, if you will. You know, because all the Jews had to do that. You know, it was God's law that everyone on the eighth day of their birth, all male children had to be circumcised. And uh, if you read through where uh, uh, Abraham was, uh, when Abraham was actually given that sign of uh, of uh, uh, of the covenant between God, every, all men had to have it done. So I mean, the grown men were out there, and they were, and they had to have it done. That's pretty painful. I've known a few guys who have, who have had that done, and it's extremely painful for an adult male to have that done. A baby, they get over it pretty quick. So, uh, especially back then. Oh yeah, I mean it's done. It was a scalpel. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some strong wine. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. So, uh, you know, he had to. He hadn't had this done yet, but they they entrusted him as one of them up to that point. Okay. He would he until that was done. He would never be one of them, but he was almost. They entrusted him that much, and so uh, they they would actually stand for him if you would uh, against any opposition. All right, twenty three. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with him, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Okay, so he not only went with these three guys, but he also some of the. Uh, the Jews that were with him went with him also on this journey. Okay? This is going to come into play later on. Alright. Uh, verse 24. And the following day they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. Alright. Now this is going to build here. And the reason that I want to just notate that you or get you to see this together with his relatives and close friends. In other words, he called a whole bunch of people in. All right? Remember in the day of Pentecost, there was 120 there? When the Holy Spirit came, we added to them how many? 3,000. 3,000. So this is kind of like that, that another day of Pentecost, if you will, because he invited all of his uh, family and his friends and all that who <clears throat> believed, who believed to come and join. So this was a large gathering. Okay, uh, 25. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. 26 also. But Peter lifted, lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am also a man. See, now, Paul did this uh, uh, early, or not in this book, over in, uh, I think it was 1 Corinthians. I know mean, it was in 1 Corinthians. Uh, he said, uh, for who am I? Uh, who is Apollos? Who is Barnabas? We're just men. We're just people. So this is a very good depiction. Even though Peter is this high and mighty, self-indulgent type person, he still is professing Christ is the, the head of all things and that he is just a man or a servant of Christ, mm -hmm. which is good for Peter, and you would never expect it from Peter. <laughs> you would expect Peter to come in and go, yeah, I'm here, buddy. What do you need? I got you taken care of. Okay, old Peter's here. Let's get it. You know. Instead, he is saying, "Look, I'm just a guy." Just a man. Yeah, which is kudos for Peter. Finally, you might think he's getting some brains. Brains. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, where did we leave off? Twenty-seven. All right. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Found many. Found a bunch of people. There's a bunch of people there. Right. Keep going. Then he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going back to him getting rid of the Leviticus laws or the laws that we saw over here in uh, 9 through 16. Uh, down around 14, 15, and 16, where Jesus started getting rid of the, uh, uh, the God, if you will, started getting rid of the, uh, the unclean and clean uh, uh, 
laws of uh, feasting or laws of eating, if you will. There's, there's what God makes clean is clean. All right. So if God is bringing the Jews and the Gentiles together, okay, then who is to oppose that? All right. So he's getting rid again. This is where he's getting rid of the separation between Jew and Gentile. He's bringing Gentiles into the fold. This is this is not a Jewish guy. Okay, is not a believer in Christ yet. All right, but it is a, he is a believer in God. But God has sent him to get Peter, Saint Cornelius, to get Peter to bring him there to bring him a message. Nowhere in here did it say that uh, Cornelius uh, Cornelius sent his guys to get Peter to come and bring Christ to him. We haven't read that yet. We haven't read anything like that says that yet. Okay, he did not send his guys to say, "Hey, I want to hear about the gospel of Jesus." Hey, I want to hear about the way. Hey, I want to hear about the church. Hey, I want to hear about the Christians. He didn't say any of that. None of that's in there yet. All he did was he heard from God, go get Peter so that Peter can bring a message to you. And then God went to Peter and said, look, I'm getting rid of the, uh, the unclean and clean laws of eating. You eat whatever I tell you to eat because if I make it clean, it's clean. Now I'm also letting you know, as Peter says here, he says that the Jew and the Gentiles are to come together as one because if God makes it clean or if God brings it together, it is to be done. Okay? So, I mean, it's kind of like, wow, Peter kind of got a revelation. Cornelius didn't even know he was going to get one. You know? And, uh, and all the other people that were there are now seeing what God is doing with Peter, who is a Jew and the apostle to the Jews. Uh, Jesus has sent him, or God has sent him to a Gentile. Because he's not really a Jew, and he's, so therefore he's a Gentile. Mm -hmm. All right? All right? You can call him a Greek, you can call him Gentile, same thing, I've explained that before. Right. But if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And now Jesus uh, is telling, or God is telling Peter, bring the two together. Because he says right here, God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Well, what did he say back over here in verse uh, 15? What God has cleansed, you must not call common. See? So, these, these are God's rules. God sets the rules, whether we like it or not. He, he's the boss. He is in charge. All right? Um, 29? Uh-huh. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked then, for what reason have you sent for me? So Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Keep going all the way through 33. And said, and said Cornelius, your prayer has been heard. And your alms are remembered remember in the sight of God. Okay, stop there for just a second. Now, when it says, and your alms have been remembered in the sight of God, it doesn't mean, and we, we, a lot of times we'll relate to that as uh, alms for the poor, you know, need money or whatever, but the alms here is representation of his worship, okay? Mm -hmm. His prayers, his worshiping, his belief, his trust, etc., etc., in God, all right? Not money. Keep going. Send therefore to Joppa and call Simon here, whose surname is Peter. He is, he is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner <coughs> by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately, and you have done well to come. Now therefore we are, are all present before God to hear all things commanded you by God. Okay. Now there you go. There's your kicker right there. All things commanded you by God. So Cornelius is saying, I don't know why, I'm, why I called you here. Okay? I don't know why God said, go get Peter. I don't have any idea. All I know is, is I believe God. And an angel came to me and said, go get Peter. And so I sent my guys to go get you. And since you were coming, and I knew it had to be from God that whatever message you were going to bring... I got everybody else in here. Then all oh, my loved ones, my friends, my, my family, etc. I got them in here because if it's from God, we all need to hear it, right? Okay, that's the reason we go to church, right? 
Because if it's, if it's from God, we all need to hear it. All right. So following in order right yeah, now. <laughs> yeah. So so they had church. They had church. But you know what? They walked in the door and they didn't even know where they were going and why they were there. But yet they still went. Why? Because God drew them there. See, it's the same reason we go to church. We go to church. Now, uh, let's say, uh, I'll use Rich because I can pick on him now. Uh, <laughs> Rich has been in church for many years throughout his life. He comes down here from Texas out of the blue and uh, all of a sudden God says, go to Rock and Country Church. He walks to the door and he's like, and then he told me this the other day. He walks to the door and he's like, I'm home. This is where God told me to be. This is where I need to be. Okay? Not knowing what the heck. Okay, like Barry said one time, what idiot would name a church Rock and Country <laughs> Church? Okay? So, you see, what you see what I'm getting at though? Yeah. Okay? But God sent him here. Okay? And whenever he came here, he received what God wanted him to receive. And now, as he told me the other day, he says, I mean, when I walked in, it felt like I was home. You know? That's the power of God. It's nothing any of us do. It's the power of God. Okay? It's exactly what happened with Cornelius and his family. I'm going to send for this Peter guy, and I don't know why, but an angel of the Lord said, and I believe the Lord, so Peter, you got to come here for some reason. I don't know why. And now we're all sitting here going, why are you here? You know, so it was their obedience. To God. It was their obedience, yeah. The obedience to God. And because he was a devout believer, okay? And then whenever, like I said, whenever he gets there, they're all sitting there thinking, okay, we know you're supposed to be here, but we have no idea why. So what's the word? Because I know it comes from God. That's why he says right here. He says, <clears throat> Now therefore we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. Okay? We know you got a message for God for us, but we have not a clue what it's about. So let us know. Lay it on us. Right? Alright. Uh, yes. Okay, this is... This is uh, his his um, second Peter's second sermon. His first was on the day of Pentecost. This is his second sermon. It actually goes thirty four through forty three. I would suggest we go ahead and read it, and because we're going to read all the way through it, and just remember this is his second sermon, and we should be finished up in time to beat the clock. Okay. Good. All right. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation whoever fears him and works right, righteously, righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel preaching, Peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Okay, stop every just a second. You see where Peter's going? Okay, Peter's now doing what God sent him there to do. He's preaching his second sermon, which is Jesus Christ. All right? Keep going. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Okay, stop here for half a second. All right, remember up 37 where it says the baptism of John, baptism of John, that's John the Baptist, which is the baptism of repentance for sins, right? All right, and then I want you to see this, because this is what we're teaching on on Sunday. With the Holy Spirit and with power, okay? With the Holy Spirit and with power. Then keep going. And we, all, we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him, him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. So I remember just a second. You see that, but with witnesses chosen before him by God, remember when Jesus arose and he walked the earth for 40 days and showed himself to those who believe. Not to everybody. 
but to those who believe. Okay? Keep going. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God <clears throat> to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Okay, now if you receive remissions of sin, that means you're forgiven. If you're forgiven, therefore you can be saved. All right? Without forgiveness, there is no salvation. So that's Peter's second sermon, and it is a powerful sermon. In this particular sermon, he is not um, uh, criticizing the Jews for what they did, even though he mentions it by hanging Jesus on the tree, of course. But he is praising God for Christ that came, and by and through Christ, and through Christ alone, through the gospel, we are saved. Okay? We're, we're forgiven and we receive our salvation. So this is the long form of the gospel, if you will. So if you ever want to uh, preach the gospel to somebody, just use those scriptures right there. <laughs> Memorize them and use them all. Okay? All right. So let's stop there. All right? So uh, we'll, we'll almost finish up. Well, actually, we've got a couple minutes. Y'all want to go ahead and finish up chapter 10? Yes. Okay, good. All right, because this is actually good. This, this is the third Pentecost, okay? Uh, not the third. Okay, Pentecost means 50, which means 50 days after the resurrection of Christ, okay? So this is not 50 days. This is many days after that. But it is the act or the semblance of Pentecost. And this will be the third one that is in the book of Acts. All right? So, uh, 44 through uh, 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Okay, stop for a second. Fell upon all those. See that? Just like in the day of Pentecost, it fell upon all the people. Not some of the people. All the people. And again, all the people. All. Yep, keep word. Keep going. And, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many who came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Okay, there you go. Now you got Jew and Gentile that's saved, right? Mm -hmm. So God, Jesus is bringing them together. Keep going. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. Alright, now if you notice on that after they had received the Holy Spirit, they were baptized, right? Right. So, they were baptized in the water. Alright. What baptism did, were they baptized in the water? Remission of sins, Right. Okay, which means that on the day of Pentecost, which is back over in chapter 2, there was no baptism done there in water. So therefore, and this is what I try to stress all the time, the true baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, receiving the Holy Spirit. The people that were baptized over there in chapter 2, they were not dunked in any water. However, Peter... Because Jesus says to do this in remembrance of me, to baptize in water, in John's baptism, that Peter carried it forward and did the baptism in order. This is what we do now. Okay? You receive the Holy Spirit, you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, then you show your public proclamation by being baptized in the water. Okay? If they did not, if Peter did not insist on going down to the water or wherever it was, I mean, they could have, they even sprinkled some down back then. If he did not insist on doing that in the baptism of John, uh, then they would still be baptized in the Holy Spirit because they've already received the Holy Spirit. It said right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whenever we go out and tell people, no, the baptism in the water is just your public proclamation and showing everybody else what you've already done in your spirit. And they said, well, no, no, I got to get baptized. I got to get dunked in the water. The water has nothing to do with your baptism, not the true baptism. The true baptism is the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And you can do that just like they did in the upper room at Pentecost, just like these people did right here in Cornelius' house. 
You can do that wherever you're at. You can do it driving it to work down the highway. You know, it doesn't matter where you're at that you can receive the Holy Spirit. You can do it, I don't know, bowling in a bowling alley or something. You know, you, just whenever it, the Holy Spirit urges you and you decide to receive Christ as Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes upon you at that moment. Okay? No matter where you're at, what you're doing. Okay? Then you go out, and this is why we do the baptism the way that we do. Uh, if, if somebody says that they have received Christ as Lord and Savior and they want to be baptized in the water, I schedule it two weeks out. I try to. So that they can invite friends to witness. To witness. Okay? And so, uh, and then they can rejoice in their baptism, knowing that they have, that they're doing their public proclamation of what has already been done in their heart. And then their families and all can celebrate with them. Okay? And of course, from a pastor's standpoint, my true ambition is, is that if somebody thinks this guy can get baptized, then anybody can get baptized. Okay? So, I'm going to say, hang on just a second, hang on just a second. Let me finish my point, and, I'll get, and then I'll give you time. So, you see, whenever somebody receives the Lord, and we think, oh man, there's no way that person could, could be a Christian, well then that just all the more shows the glory of God and the mercy of God. I mean, He saved me. If He could save me, He could save Him. If He can save Him, He can save y'all. Okay? So that's, that's the reason we do it that way. And here it is right here in black and white. Okay? What you got? I bet you was looking on the calendar and next Thursday <coughs> marks my two years. Marks my two years. Since two years since oh. I got the Holy Spirit. Do we need to do it again? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. So we're good, right? So, yes, ma'am. So, <clears throat> sure. Confirmation uh, for that one thing from the cross. Yeah, exactly. There was no water there. Yeah. yeah, he received the Holy Spirit, or he received Christ, that's the best way to put it, which is the Holy Spirit, of course, which is God. Okay, he received Christ, and he recognized who Christ was, and he worshiped Christ. He says, I know you are who you are, and when you get to your Father's house, will you please just remember me? He humbled himself, and Christ says, today you will be with me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it has nothing to do with the water. That's simply... What Jesus tells us to do in remembrance of Him, which is the baptism of John the Baptist, which is the cleansing of their sins, a remembrance of repentance of your sins. Okay. And the apostles, if I'm mistaken, including Paul, were not baptized in water. Right. And they're in the upper room. They got the Holy Spirit. They're baptized. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, okay. Um, actually, they didn't receive the Holy Spirit until the day of Pentecost. Also, remember Jesus said. Wait until you receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah, when they're upper so, room in the flame of tongues. Yeah, there. That, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. okay. Not, not the upper room, yeah. no, whenever they were with Christ. All right, okay, good. I just wanted to clarify. All right. All right, so we're good with everything. Anybody got any questions on anything? All right, good enough. Uh, Brother Kenneth, you'll press out. Don't you get a first place? Huh? 44 verses? You did good. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Dear Lord, thank you for teaching us tonight. We appreciate our Bible study and learning more about your plan. We lift up our prayer book to you. There's so many needs in there. We know you'll answer those in a manner that will glorify you. Lift up our country and Israel to you tonight. We pray for all the military that are abroad and serving in the Middle East. Dear Lord, we always ask you to guide and protect our first responders, police, military, and political leaders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> for those who are still watching, well, not watching, but for those who uh, will watch, I apologize. It's my bad, and I'm going to blame it on Brett. <laughs>